Andrew Allen, who is actually president of Commonwealth Australia and has over 20 years uh, professional industry experience and actually leading a number of initiatives for Commonwealth Australia, including potentially the development of this uh, national testing protocol. So please welcome Andrew. Thank you. I've just checked my emails and no one's gone on to me yet, but um, we'll see what so happens as the day progresses. So look, yes, I think, um, thanks very much for the opportunity to be here, um, and thanks very much to the panellists for actually providing their, their views and making it a, a very constructive and, and positive session. Um, a national priority project to Stormwater Australia, so I think Tony mentioned that there's been a few goes at trying to get these, these things up and going, and you know, someone's mentioned me on the way in 20 years and we still haven't progressed very far, so I think that... Um, I certainly think that um, when I, similar to Brad, when I took over the national presidency about 18 months ago, I figured there was somewhat a, a way to make our mark and this was some, one of those priority projects that I thought we needed to pick up and, and run with. And I'm really happy at this stage that we look like we've got, we've got a good starting point. So my presentation, I've got to take a, a national, national focus. So while some of this has been focused around what's happening in Queensland, um, we need to also make sure that we've got a process that moves forward and, and actually works across the country. Um, there's a lot of noise. Um, there's lots of things that you know, people might want to talk about, but they don't actually add to the, the conversation. There's some things that we have to focus on. Um, so we need to be focused on those tangible outcomes, and when the noise comes up, we need to have a way of just putting that to the side and say that's not going to help. Um, from the national perspective, we've got different stakeholders, climactic drivers, land users that we have to, we have to look at. So the question of variable rainfall and, and things like that has, has come up, and that's certainly across the nation, that's true, the, the comment made by Smiley about what if it doesn't rain in Adelaide, well, that's, that's a real factor that we need, to, we need to consider, and a range of different settings that we need to work through. So in terms of the stakeholders and settings, we've got suppliers, we've got users, we've got regulator, regulators, we've got the academia, and we've also got the, the association. I think that um, in moving the conversation forward, the association has to recognise that it's as much part of the, the conversation as it is driving it, and we've got to be responding that way, because ultimately what we are is we're a reflection of, of the industry. Um, we have to recognise that there's different state jurisdictions and policies, cl climatic drivers, land users, and also um, across the, 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 the industry, different levels of resource, resource and capacity, and that probably also flows onto the people who use and specify the products as well. So we have to have something that recognises all of this. Putting that all together, there's a lot of stuff. So I was, when, when this, when this detail of this se session came up, I was actually forced to take a step back and think about, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to make sure that it all fits together and we, and we keep people moving along? Um, so I think that really what we're talking about is a story of um, variance integration. So we know that there's lots of variance, but we also know that we need to focus on the things that are going to pull us together. Within each of the industry segments, so I talked about academia and suppliers and that sort of stuff, within each, within each of those silos there's going to be a range of discussions and opinions and that sort of stuff. And what we have to do is we have to understand how that interplays within that segment, but also how that then plays across the broad range of stakeholders. So what the suppliers um, you know, are able to do, recommend what's from their capacity, it has to make sense from the, the perspective of a user and it has to make sense from the perspective of a, you know, sort of a testing inst um, institution. So we need to create that dynamic, and that's, that's the role that I see um, Stormwater Australia actually playing. And then I think really in that, it's really important that each of those individual groups has to focus on taking responsibility for their bit in the conversation and the story, and actually making sure that they can provide the most constructive inputs to achieve that integration in both the vertical and the horizontal sense. So being an engineer, um, box plots sort of, you know, so I suppose statistically this is what we may have. Um, and I haven't put academics in here, but certainly, you know, I'm looking at it from, and, and it, I, I've done a lot of sort of multiple sort of stakeholder consultation and everything. And when I was putting the, the situation of actually trying to boil it down, this is the picture that it sort of came down to. There, there's, within each of those groups, there's an area where people will agree and there's an area where people won't agree. What we need to do is we need to focus on where those areas of agreement are. And the, the, then from the Stormwater Australia perspective, we can take an option of do we want to be agree with everybody or do we want to agree with a very narrow focus? And that's sort of, that's, that's the horizontal integration discussion going on. So in preparing for this, I sort of, um, sort of worked with Brad and, and we sort of went and spoke to the, the manufacturers and sort of asked them what their wish list, what some of the things that they'd like to see coming out of this. Now, I've got some things here, so um, certainly, and it's probably been reflected in the conversations you've heard, a nationally consistent approach, 
um, some clarity around definitions. Um, we need to include design, installation and operational aspects, um, ultimately. Um, there has to be R&D pathways to market. Um, there has to be a way of to efficiently transfer the existing knowledge that's out there so we don't waste the good efforts that have been done in the past. We need to be able to account for variances in climate and um, catchment. There needs to be a level of independence. Um, there needs, needs to be some sort of expectations around how information is provided to users so that they can actually um, understand and assimilate it. And we also, also use to make use of effective frameworks. So we've got things like guidelines and everything that have been developed. How do we actually build upon those? There are some things that we, we're not going to get very far if we focus on. So particularly if we start talking about trade secrets and IP and knowledge and that sort of stuff, if we start delving into where customer relationships and everything, that's, that's, that's probably a no-go. So I think that we've got, the, we've got the basis, and certainly it's been reflected in these conversations, where we know where we need to focus. So that's where the effort needs to be. And everything else, it's noise. So let's just let's put that to, to one side, and as we move forward, let's just recognise how it all plays together. Similarly, as we move through, we're going to have the different groups, and they're going to have, and I haven't done, you know, we haven't done the analysis in detail of all those, but similarly, they're going to have areas where they, they agree and they disagree, and really what we have to do is we have to pull that, that together and find the, the common threads. Um, so I've had a stab at some of the things that I think um, might be of interest to these um, particular groups, um, and that's certainly been informed by a little bit of work that Peter Newland did for us over the last 12 months. But there's some more depth that needs to be put into there that we can um, do as we move forward. So I suppose from Stormwater Australia's perspective, where do we want to sit? Um, we can actually go and capture the broadest consensus. That may lead to everyone thinks that's really nice, but we might actually get nowhere. We might have just, you know, sort of some unworkable compromises in that. Um, and then we might also just decide to go and focus on some very narrow sort of, you know, outcomes. And that's probably not going to work for people either because there's variance in there. And if we try to narrow things down, we actually miss that variance. So I think that what we're going to have to do as we move forward is we're going to have to break the issues down to a scale that's appropriate to balance the um, consensus between... But yeah, but getting the consensus and also having a, a suitably defined outcome that actually makes sense um, in a practical sense. And that's something that we're going to have, there's steps that we're going to have to move through. Um, in doing this, um, one of the other things that's really important is actually to recognise who the association is as, a, as an organisation. And recently we've some, done some analysis of our, of our membership breakdown and really as a, as a group, the suppliers are, you know, sort of they're just a percentage, but really the bulk of our membership actually comes from the users and the specifiers. So really, we have to make sure that whatever comes out of the process actually works for the, the broad base of our members. And I think having that recognition, that's actually the, the focus that we need. And, and if, we, if we keep that in mind and it's, we're servicing the needs of the broader industry, that's going to work really well. So there's a few things that we've been doing, and, and Brad sort of mentioned that there has been a little bit of work, but progress has been really slow, and I think Tony mentioned, you know, having a few stabs at this, and if you look at that time frame, progress has been intolerably slow. Um, I think that over the last 12 months, we've actually started making some sensible progress, and I hope that we can build some momentum. I'm thinking that, I think at this stage, we're on the tarmac. Over the next few months, we actually want to get on the runway, and by, you know, sort of shortly thereafter, up in the air. But sort of, so... Um, in 2010, we, we undertook a literature review with the CSIRO. Um, that was presented at a conference. Um, my view is we sort of got too much down in the technical detail too early, and we really didn't. We sort of came at loggerheads. Um, that was essentially liter liter literature review. Um, some of the data gathering in that, you know, there wasn't a, le a level of trust, so we sort of we, we, we've had problems sort of pulling information in from that process. Um, the report was good. It identified um, issues and made a series of recommendations. Um, essentially. What it was saying was there was, you know, different people, you know, was, had different views and perceptions and everything. There wasn't anything that pulled it all together. And it took a long time to publish, but sort of it's been up on our website for, for a year. So that's, if you want to have a look at some of the work that's been done in the past, it's there. We've got a squid subcommittee that's actually working at the, um, the national level. Um, one of the, um, sort of the guys on that, Rod Wise, um, he's sort of done some work on actually looking at what the user requirements are. So he's come at it from a consultant's perspective and said, if I need to specify a product, What's the information that I need so I can make a decision? And I think that's actually, in terms of where we have to go, that's actually a useful um, contribution and, and we'll have to weave that into the process. Um, and I've got um, Peter Newland up from South Australia, so he's asked a few questions. There, there's a man standing up there. He, he's done some work for us over probably the last eight months, I think, where he's actually gone and done a, a fair bit of consultation um, and that was um, received, um, we received the report um, a few weeks ago. Really, he's gone and looked at the different industry sectors um, and, and basically said, what are your needs, what are your requirements, what are your thoughts? And 
um, and brought that all together. And I think that's that's really informed, from my perspective, how we need to progress this forward. It hasn't actually got down to the detail. It wasn't the requirement of that, but it was actually saying, well, you know, how do we have to consult? Um, and it also looked at a few different approaches on developing a methodology. And we had Standards Australia sort of mentioned as one framework. There's also things done under the National Quarter national water quality management system as well. So there's some, so there's some ways we can do that. Ultimately, even at the end of that, it just means we have to actually get into the, the, the mode of doing and, and, and start doing that. And there's also some things that we've also been trying to do through our bulletin as well. Um, I'm really big on actually um, engaging with the membership through the bulletin. Um, that goes out to everybody and very open to receiving feedback, discussion, um, opinions and that sort of stuff. Um, a couple of the manufacturers have actually sort of added some contribution just to where they think we need to be heading, and I'd really like to round that out with some, some broader um, thoughts from everybody else. And we've also got a forum up on our national website, and really we're looking to publish good stories or, or you know, good ideas or, or how, we need to, how we can work together. Um, we need to develop a model, Australian standards. Could that be a goal? I mean, I think that um, for my discussions with people, it's actually, there's, there's a lot of work involved in it. It's actually a really good endpoint to get. It can be time consuming. There's a range of different pathways that we can use to get there. National Water Guideline, um, when looking at that, that's actually good because it gets some regulator buy-in at the national level and that can filter through down to the states. Um, but we have to, and that, that also has different levels of steering group and working group involvement. And we can also do it our, our own. We can have a voluntary conduct, um, voluntary sort of thing, a code of conduct sort of um, idea, and actually pick up some of the work that's been done overseas. I think that the starting point has to be industry-led. Um, as the point that Stephen made is, if we get far enough down the track, um, someone like Standards Australia might pick up and say, well, actually, you know, why, isn't, why, aren't we, why haven't we been leaving this? And if, if we get to that point, that's where we need to be. Um, I think the, the other thing about going and making it industry-led is that actually the, a lot of it's within our control. We don't have to wait for, you know, sort of governments to make decisions or committees to come together. So that would be my preference. Can I have to, oh, sorry. Yep, Last yep, um, pretty much. So. Um, so also I think that we can't, do, do we go it alone? I think that as we move down the process, we're actually going to have to reach out to other groups that may be a better place to um, help us with the implementation. So particularly around sort of, you know, the maintenance and that sort of stuff. There's other um, groups, maybe some of the developer, developer peak bodies and um, municipal peak bodies are probably going to be useful in that um, thing. Um, I think that the other thing about our membership is we've got enough members that are members of other associations that if we consult with our members, on what needs to happen, we're actually going to get a good insight to what works for these other those other industry groups. Um, we have to progress in a number of theme areas. We have to make sure. Yep. Yeah, so. Yep. Yep. So, so this is my final point. So, so the point. That, so, and this, and this is probably the most important. This is probably the most important point. So, in putting this together, um, asked for some outcomes, and I and the things that I wanted to get out of today was wanted to get a public understanding, or you know, where the consensus and variation was amongst the stakeholder group, and I think we've done that really well. I want to get a sense of what the interplay with the other stakeholder groups are, and that's probably a discussion that we can have as we move forward. And I also really want to get some commitment from the manufacturers, and I'm sort of going to put you sort of on the spot, and we'll get it in writing later on. <laughs> but um, I'd like to um, the next steps. I think we need to we need to get together and actually put together some sort of terms of reference. I mean, there's discussions that happen in the open forum, and there's also discussions that need to happen behind closed doors. Um, the next step that I see is actually for the industry, the manufacturer group, to go and have those behind closed doors discussions and come forward with some options saying this is what we've sorted out, this is what we've got to, this is what we need to move forward with and actually take control of that. That becomes a useful, very useful first step that we can actually flow into getting a whole lot of other things happening. So um, so that's my that's my challenge to people and um, I don't know whether people want to be put on the spot now or... Well, before we do that, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put them on the spot. Okay. Thank you very much, Andrew, for your presentation. So I, so I, I think that um, ultimately it has to be the people that are going to most benefit out of getting the technical detail right have to be involved in the conversation. Um, they have to drive it. 
we have to put some clear rules around it so that if, if we don't get anywhere, we have to have a way to break down some of the deadlocks and that sort of stuff, which I think has probably hampered things in the past. So that's really that's the, the process in terms of reference. I'd actually like to take another step back, and before we actually work out the... And this comes down to the problem, the problem definition, but what sort of information do we have to provide? So let, let, let's, under, let's get a consensus on what people are going to put on the table, what people are willing to share, and we'll use that as a starting point. And then from that, we then need to you know, sort of work out exactly what the next step is. So in terms of what information people are going to put on the table and share, that's really, that's the guys that have the information that they need to put on the table and share. So that's my, that's my starting point. Um, that, that's the starting point. It's now to focus on the end point. You know, yeah. I, I'm on a time frame, you know, uh, CMA had a call before, you know, they want to commit more resources yeah. unless they have a definitive outcome. And I guess with that comes a timeline. Have you got, have you got a timeline in mind for the uh, publication of the National Testing Protocol? So I think... Can these guys work to a deadline? Yeah, so I think, I think the deadline that they can work to, yes. The deadline could be next week if we can sort it out next week. <laughs> if it takes, if it takes, so so I suppose in that the the, the SWEMA approach was mentioned, where you know my understanding of that was basically there were some technical issues that needed to be worked out, and people were you know sort of invited into a conversation, and it went round and round until there was a consensus on what needed to happen. I think we need to do something similar to that. We need to adapt that to Australian conditions and everything like that. Now the thing there is that conversation can take as little or as long as it needs to happen to get the consensus. The thing that we need to make sure that we've got clearly in our terms of reference is if someone's in there sort of just, you know, throwing curveballs and just slowing the noise, we have to have some way of take the, take the noise out of it and, and park that for, and recognise it for what it is. Now, that puts the, the timeline in the control of, you know, sort of the people that sort of are most sort of likely to benefit from it. From a Stormwater Australia perspective, there's a few things that we can facilitate to, to you know, put in place to facilitate that. Um, and that's really, that's the next discussion that we need to have. So that's, yeah. Speaking of the next discussion, I know there's a few people putting their hands up, but we're actually going to, after the morning tea break, we're going to have, a, a, I think, almost an hour dedicated to the discussion of every single talk about today. If you have any questions, if you get an opportunity to ask, please bring them uh, after the break. And obviously, we're going to have a, so basically a lot more interactive, and I encourage everyone to be, uh, get filled up with your tea and coffee and biscuits and muffins and stuff, and come back, we're going to rock and roll with Highly uh, anticipated debate. So, morning teas out on the deck. Thank you very much, Andrew, for his presentation. Yeah.